gonna cut your bar, Steve. What are you working on? My chain slipped off the bar. What does that mean? That means that the the this, this chain if if the, I didn't know you were recording. Do you think do you think people want to know about chainsaws? Yeah, you should teach our viewers about chainsaws. You think I'm qualified? No, but you have so you have some if, good information to share. I guess. Um, okay. Uh, so we'll do the well, well that's 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 fun. I I see people asking about chainsaws. So I'm not and I'm not an expert. I've just been a chainsaw enthusiast and user since I was about eight years old. Eight. Um, yeah, eight. I had some no. uncles with a twisted no. sense of humor. No, I am. You're not eight. You're three. Eight years old is, is like a kid. It is. You're six. So I'd be two years older than you. Do not give a child a chainsaw. That could be less than one. Um, I'm sure, so the owner's manual you should read, you just get all the legal stuff out of the way. Read all the safety stuff there, you know, wear eye protection, ear protection, you know, leg protection, hand protection. Obviously you watch my videos, I don't do that. That might be like a real world scenario, but honestly, if you are not comfortable with chainsaws, you should probably invest in all that equipment as you get more comfortable with them. The most important thing is don't touch the blade when it's spinning. That's kind of a rule with a lot of tools. When the blade is spinning, always know where it's at, right? But some getting past all of that, some common chainsaw problems. One is you're replacing the, the chain or you had a chain slip like what I did, right? Because you'll be sawing along and it might get pinched and stuff and it'll just, or it'll just loosen over time. So every chainsaw is different, but they are kind of all the same. So down here, you're gonna have you're gonna have two bolts here and here, right? That's what I was taking off when you came up. They hold the bar in place, and then underneath it, you see I have this tension screw. And again, you can refer to your owner's manual for where all those pieces are, but you will have a tension screw and you will have some bolts holding on the on the, the bar. I can tell you that for a certainty, but where it's at might, it might be underneath, you know, that would be terrible. But on this Echo, it's on the side and the two here. So we can take this off now. Okay. So it's no, that dirty. Is dirty. Yeah. Which is just, it's just sawdust and oil and we'll, yeah, it's dirty. Yeah. But it, it happens. I mean, you always got to take care of your tools and stuff. So if you see here, what's going on is the chain the bar let me okay, how bad are you okay all right that's not bad i probably should have checked before doing a tutorial video how bad the failure was but it's not it just popped off the bar because honestly i knew it was getting loose and i couldn't be bothered to walk 100 feet over to get my wrench to tighten it back up again i'll show you how to tighten the chain and everything too but you see how the bar slides like this back and forth man dirty right so you have this sliding track right here that's where these two bolts are gonna go and then you have this little hole right here on the bottom and in the top and that's where this is gonna meet up at like that when you put it in and that's where this tension arm here will move back and forth and that's how you get tension on your chain so we're gonna just put this back on we're gonna line the chain up and back to the whole PP, PPP, P, 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 -E. P what'd you call it? PPE. PPP -P -P conversation. You should maybe wear gloves while you do this. Um, but I don't have any gloves. So you just get into the track like that. Just in the front of the chain, there's like a little sprocket that spins around like that. That's where these these little inside chain teeth are at. And if you don't know which side of the chain is the sharp side, just scrape your hand. Don't do that. I was just... <laughs> so obviously, you put it in the track, and you kind of pull it like that. 
Keep it lined up. Okay. So it's going to stay loose like this while we put our cover back on. And we're going to line up this little post here. See as you move this screw here, it just moves that little post forward and backwards. And that, it'll make sense once it's on there on how that applies pressure to the chain. But anyway, you're going to line up your post here with the hole that's on the bottom. Get it on there and then get the bolts on just like that. You see the chain is still wobbly. That's fine. We're going to get those nuts back on. We're just going to do a couple turns like that with the finger. Just like that. We can, um, we can take the, uh, the screwdriver end of it and we can put it in this little track and kind of pull it a little bit. Anyway, with these nuts here, we don't, we don't want them tight at all. So we just need to get them on there so that when we do get the chain, a little bit tighter it's not so many turns to finally get it done so you see like that but we're still very floppy so now I'm gonna switch to my flathead side of the tool and I'm gonna go to my tension and you see as I turn it chain tightens up like that it's pretty good there almost that actually wasn't pretty good I don't know why I said that that was a lie don't do that this is way too loose Right, that's gonna pop off. So just make it a little bit tighter. Okay, so we're gonna tighten these nuts up a little bit, and you're just kind of work your way. You're gonna work your way in, right? But you don't want these nuts so tight that it's not gonna let the bar move back and forth. Right, so they are right on the cusp. If I do one big turn, they're gonna be very snug. So now I'm gonna finish getting the tension how I want it. There, that's good. That's the tension you want. You wanna be able to move the chain a little bit because obviously it needs to move around the track, but you don't want it so loose. Like earlier example where I said, that was good, that was stupid, that's not good. This is good. Now we don't need to tension that anymore. We're just gonna finish snugging these up here. And don't kill the don't kill the bolts, but at the same time, get them pretty tight, you know. But also don't over tighten, you know. Go pretty tight. All right, so chains back on. And again, you should probably do this without gloves, but you know, make sure your your bar stop is off, and you can actually check to see if the chain will move on its own like that. And it shouldn't take. It shouldn't take a lot of effort to move the chain, but it should take a little bit, okay? So, that's how you replace the chain or fix the chain that's been slipped. So the next part about chainsaw maintenance, as you're using it, you're gonna need to put oil in it. The oil, the bar oil will always be up here towards the front. What this is doing is it's applying oil to the chain because this chain is whipping around this thing All right, so the kind of oil is just bar and chain oil. Again, you can get it from the same section in the home improvement stores where you buy your wood wedges, you know, where the chainsaw is at, you should see bar and chain oil. And then you're gonna pour it in here. Like so. And then get it up get it pretty fairly close to the top but that's why that little why this little thing is so hard to take on and off is because inevitably you know you're putting more oil in it and you're doing it while you're balanced on top of a wall and stuff and it just goes everywhere like this is just oil everywhere man just but you need the oil in there otherwise you're gonna burn up your your saw as you're cutting and then I don't know how that gets so tight because I always just finger tighten it there's no reason to go crazy. As long as you have that O-ring on there, it's not going to leak out. The next step, the next thing to know about
Next thing you know about it is what kind of what kind of gas are you going to put in it? So, very important. Reference your owner's manual because this is a two-stroke engine, right? So what that means in layman's terms, with all you need to know about two-stroke versus four-stroke. Two-stroke engine, the gas and the oil are mixed together. In a four-stroke engine, you have the gas and then you have the oil in a separate it's a separate thing. They are not mixed together, right? So this is two stroke. I do know that they make four stroke chainsaws. Those things are pretty awesome. But you're, you probably have a two stroke chainsaw. Two stroke engine oil. You can buy these little containers of oil and on it it'll say add to X amount of gas and it'll make X amount of two stroke, you know, whatever. If you don't feel like doing that math, in the same section where you got the bar oil, in the same section where you got the tool if you need it. The big box stores, they send these ready mixed ones. They have 40 to 1 mixtures and 50 to 1 mixtures. The owner's manual is going to say one or the other. That will be the kind of gas oil mixture that you put into a two stroke. Sharpening the blade. We could do some of that. This blade is pretty sharp, so I'm not going to worry about sharpening the whole thing but I'll show you I'll show you where it's at okay so there's however many teeth on this thing and they go left right left right left right but on the chain and your chain is like this too there is going to be two teeth that are going in the same direction here they are right I don't know what you call these but I call them my starter teeth they probably have a name I don't care but see how they're both going in the same direction and then every other one is left right left right you know like that down the chain but as a tip so I know some people will take like a little sharpie and make a little mark on one of the on one of the teeth so as they work their way around they'll know when to stop but there's only one point on this entire saw where two teeth are going in the same direction so I use those, that's why I call them my starter teeth. Again, I don't know what they're actually for or why they're there, but this is, again, I'm not a professional, but that's what I do. So I'll start on my starter teeth like this. And if you get one of these chainsaw ones, uh, chainsaw files like this, right? Um, this is a 5 30 seconds file. You need to look for whatever file matches the chain that you put on it, okay? So when you buy a chain, there'll be stats on the back of it and it will honestly on the front it'll probably tell you what kind of file to use so this is a 3 8 low profile 5 30 seconds file right all that means is this file fits on this chain and if I was to go and buy another chain I would buy the same one so I don't have to buy another file um, but anyway so we have these markings on here we have 30 degrees 25 degrees 25 35 right so again, my chain wants 30 degrees. So I have this line going right here. So I'm gonna line up that line there and with a nice stroke like this, I'm gonna keep the file straight. And I'm gonna just go like that, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the tooth that's going where the high point is to my left. Now the high point to my right, I'm gonna do the same thing but in the other direction like this. I'm gonna pull it, right? So line up your line right there. And then you pull it across the tooth like that. And then you're just gonna work your way down the ch down the chain. About normally under normal use, if you haven't hit a rock, hit a rock or the chain dipped into the dirt or anything like that, five to ten strokes per tooth. If you're just doing normal maintenance on it. Anyway, that's how you sharpen a chain. If Cause are you here watching this? Let's just do everything. Okay, so as I work my way down the chain, every couple teeth, I'm gonna rotate my file a little bit so that I don't wear the file down in just one spot, right? So you just rotate it like that. Eventually this file is going to not be filing. The files don't be filing. To replace it, all you don't need to buy a whole new file system, that's a waste of money, but you can buy these individual little files here. And all to do that is you just, I mean, you probably put it together yourself, but you unscrew these two screws and you can pull the file out just like that. 
and then you just buy these. I think they come in like two and three packs. They're much cheaper than buying, buying the whole system. You just put it back on like that, shove it in, tap it in, stuff like that. Mine's actually broke up here, so I can't tighten it. The, the, th the thing is broken. So just imagine that was finger tight up there. But this one here gets tight, so. And then you're back in business, and you, for a fraction of the cost, you replaced your file. Easy. Go ahead and uh, send me your extra money for saving you that money. <laughs> back on the PPP thing. Um, PPE. What she said. But back on that thing, so this, so I've been using this saw all day today and the chain slipped off, right? And I need to fix it and stuff like that. Um, this is like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just casually working around this thing, but that's from the MS. I don't really feel temperature that much, but this is, this is extremely hot. This thing gets very hot. So you should probably wear gloves. I'm going to be regretting it later. Just remember your saw is going to be very hot. So you can let it cool down, but Ain't nobody got time for that, right? <laughs> so just as a tidbit, if you get in here and you touch the muffler right here, you're gonna have a bad day, you know? Uh, also, that's the muffler. You don't need to know what that is, but that's the muffler. It's hot, it's all hot. The chain will be hot. If you saw it through a couple trees and you go and touch the chain, it's gonna be hot because friction. Starting a chainsaw. Okay, so two stroke chainsaw again here. Um, a four stroke chainsaw will be probably pretty similar, but you won't have to probably choke it down quite as much. But if this was cold, um, I'm not going to do it right now, but give it like a good five pumps on the primer and then pull the choke down. Don't forget to turn the on switch. If you've got one, turn it on, give it a couple good pulls. And then honestly, most times I end up starting it by putting the choke back off again. So my biggest, my biggest safety tip is you don't want to use a chainsaw when you're super tired. But it's kind of like one of them catch-22s. Using a chainsaw is tiring work, but you don't want to use it when you're tired. So you need to know your own limitations because if you're tired, you start getting lazy and being like, oh, I can trim on this side of the log. I don't want to step all the way over, you know, or you don't have the strength to control it. So don't push yourself on the chainsaw that's when mistakes happen when the when the blade is spinning you need to know where that blade is at all points in time know your limits when you get tired you need to stop because your grip will go you'll start making stupid mistakes because you want to cut corners and it'll make you it'll make you pay but if you do that stuff it's really not it's really not a scary tool and that's just the operation of the chainsaw so dropping the trees um, I think we have uh, a place where I was talking. Yeah, so we're gonna link in the description or a pinned comment we're gonna put in when we drop one of the really big trees. And after that, I'm talking and um, I think I put up the Ricky Bobby thing which say like, we really like the track. So my mind is kind of out of it because it was really tiring like getting to that point, not just like the mental focus, but like the physical aspect of it too. And then she puts a camera in my face and be like, all right, talk about it now. So you can see where the level of exhaustion is at. Uh, what you don't see in that video is before we move on or do anything else, we had lunch and we had some, we had, uh, we hydrated water and stuff. Like we took a little bit of a break. Um, it wasn't stated like we need to take a break now because I'm too tired to do this. It was just, it was like, okay, let's just take a minute. That tree's not going anywhere. It's on the ground, right? So we got it where we want it. Now we need to go through and take it apart. So you kind of just take a little bit of time to uh, bounce back. That's my that's my biggest tip, right? Is uh, and it probably says in the owner's manual. Honestly, don't operate if you're overly tired. Um, and I know it's easy to get in the zone. You're piecing apart. You're just going and going and going. You don't realize you're getting tired. So just just pay attention to what you're doing. You'll be all right. But if you have any specific questions about a chainsaw or if something I covered was maybe about as clear as mud, um, just post them in the comments. 
and I'll do my best to answer them or maybe find you a source that can answer it for you. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just a chainsaw enthusiast. But yeah, I'm gonna take my advice and uh, I'm gonna go get some lunch, take a little break. Put the sheath on the saw so no curious little kid comes and grabs it. We'll see you next time.